In 2016, Benino sued one of those women who sued him when he was a cop, claiming she caused him to suffer injuries that day. That was also settled before it ever went to trial. One of the conference speakers, the man you heard saying he loves fighting and shooting, told CBS2 in a statement he believes police need a warrior mindset to survive. Chris? Uh, within reason, of course. Um, now, you mentioned Benino was brought up on three disciplinary charges. Right. What were the two others? So he was given two letters of reprimand. One was because he allegedly rear-ended someone he was trying to pull over. The other was because internal affairs investigators said that he actually opened a barber shop with a convicted felon before he properly not notified his bosses about that. That is against department policy. And by the way, the comptroller says that New Jersey Police Departments have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years sending officers, officers yeah. to street cop training sessions. You would think it would be vetted a little bit more before you're going to shell out hundreds of thousands of dollars to send your police force. Now, we heard the AG said those 240 officers that did get this training are now going to be retrained. I guess if you're the public at large and you're relying on police to protect, serve and protect, I guess what's the concern that they're going to follow this training that they got here that they shouldn't have gotten as opposed to the new training that they'll now get. Well, now the attorney general is going to be keeping a close watch on this. Yeah. That's what he indicated in the interview, at least. So yeah. that should make a big difference here. And now there's a big spotlight on this whole operation and the whole issue of private police training companies in general. And as far as like the, this uh, street cop training, I mean, is it, I, obviously it sounds like they've got it's a lot of a lot of clients out there. They seem to be hired by quite a few people. Mm -hmm. Story, sure. I mean, are other police forces around the country saying to themselves, "Hey, what are we doing, bringing these guys in to talk to our cops?" Well, we have heard of other police departments that are taking a look at this, and some that have even said, "You know, perhaps we should pull back." And you heard the attorney general there say, "As far as the 38,000 cops in New Jersey, he's sending a message to all of them, saying." don't go to these training sessions. So it's certainly going to be something that a lot of police departments are thinking about and are currently thinking about right now. And I guess anybody accountable within some of the police departments, and let's just talk about the state of New Jersey here, keep it local for actually having hired these guys. I mean, if the AG's looking into it and the AG's like, you know what, this training was terrible, we gotta redo the whole thing. There's gotta be somebody that checked the box and said, you know what, let's bring these guys in. That's probably have to answer some questions. Well, it's a good question. I mean. That's why we were asking the attorney general in that interview, should this yeah. have been a red flag? Yeah. Because it makes you wonder, what's the process here for yeah. hiring a outside police agency or an outside police training agency, an outside police trainer? What is the vetting process there? That's one of the questions we had throughout this story, and the attorney general did say that he's going to have the police training commission take a close look at that issue and hopefully come out, come up with some rules yeah. for outside vendors. Exactly. Maybe change the way they uh, they do vet these companies. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Sure. Greatly Thanks, appreciate Chris. it. All right. CBS2 investigative reporter Tim Nicholas with us, and we will be right back. Stay with us.